Okay, so here we have a good question about binomial expansion. Um, binomial expansion, which is going to be on the core two paper. So, uh, good news, we get to use a calculator for this one, which we will need. Now, by using binomial expansion, or otherwise, express this in the form here. Uh, so we don't want to just multiply this all out because that's, well, it's not really going to help us. And, um, you know, they, they do say binomial expansion. So we want to um, get as most as we can. If we just try and multiply this all out, it's actually going to take more time than using binomial expansion. Uh, so if there's a homework assignment and you feel like wasting your time, okay, that's your priority. But for four marks um, on a timed exam, we don't want to risk that. So we're going to use binomial expansion. Now, if you think about what this is going to look like, um, it's definitely going to follow this form. And the reason it's going to have the 1 and the 16x to the 4th is because it's going to be 1 times 1 uh, all the way in the beginning, uh, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. And what that is is the coefficient. So here's the binomial coefficient times b. Um, and this is b to the 0. This is b to the 1st. So I'm going to have the other coefficient. And this is b squared plus the other coefficient times b to the third, plus the last term, which is no coefficient, and it's going to be 2x, the b term, to the fourth power. 2 to the fourth is 16. x to the fourth is x to the fourth. Uh, I've been saying b. I should say that this is really a plus b to the n power. So with all of these, uh, you can see the sort of habit of the, um, the index. So here the b term, this 2x, is increasing by a power of 1 each time. Now the coefficient, that binomial coefficient, there are going to be three of them. And what it is is going to be n choose r. And we're going to solve this using factorials. Now the n, that is the same n here. So for all of these, it's going to be 4. That's 4, that's 4, and that's 4. The r is which order coefficient it's going to be. So this is 1, 2, and 3. This formula here is going to be, so if I have n choose r, this is going to be n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. So if I have 4 choose 1, this is going to be 4 factorial over 1 factorial times 3 factorial. Now I know what you're thinking, this is going to take forever, but don't forget this is on your core 2 paper. So we can use a calculator. Uh, again, I'm using my TI-84 here. If uh, you're using your Casio, it may be a little bit different. Um, and if you're a student of mine, then I will happily guide you through it. Um, your calculator may even have a factorial button here, which is the little explanation point. Um, if mine does, I haven't been able to see it. So we're going to have to uh, open up a menu for this, which isn't bad. So I'm going to do 4, and then to get my factorial, it's just in here. It's usually with statistics, in this case probability. And there, it's right there. So I get 4 factorial divided by, now I'm going to do 1 factorial times 3 factorial. Close that up. And that's going to give me 4. So that equals 4, so I can even put that there. So that means that this first coefficient here is going to be 4. Um, actually, I don't, like, I, I don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to just rewrite this over here. So we're going to have 1 plus 4, brackets 2x, plus, put in a blank space, 2x squared. That's just going to be 4x squared, plus the coefficient here, 2x to the third. That's going to be 8x to the third plus the 16x to the fourth. Okie dokie. So let's get this next one. 
So the next one is going to be for choose two. Uh, and we're just going to use the same sort of formula. So I can actually write this out again. So this 4 choose 2 is going to be 4 factorial over 2 factorial times 4 minus 2, which is, of course, 2. So nice thing about here with this calculator is I don't need to worry about typing all that in again um, because I can just copy it and replace the numbers with the new numbers. So this one's going to be 6. So this is going to equal 6. So I put my 6 into there. And finally, the last coefficient is going to be 4 choose 3. So that's going to be 4 factorial over 3 factorial times 4 minus 3, which is 1 factorial. And so when I plug this in, uh, this is going to be 3, and this is going to be 1. And again, we have a 4. So 4, 6, 4. Um, and it says to write out this, so here I'm just going to simplify this. 1 plus the 4 times the 2x is 8x, plus 6 times 4 is 24x squared, plus the 4 times 8 is 32x to the third, plus 16x to the fourth. Um, a, B, and C are in fact integers. This is the correct answer, and that's worth four marks for part A. Uh, for part B, they want to show that now this is equal to this. Uh, we don't need to redo this. In fact, it would just be a colossal waste of time if we did. Uh, the key here is the negative sign. So we have the 1 plus 2x quantity to the fourth. We, we have that, and that's right here. So this is the answer for part A. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to include this for my steps for part B. We have a minus sign here. Think about minuses. If I multiply a, a minus, if I multiply a negative by a negative, it's going to be a positive. If I multiply a negative by a negative by a negative, it'll be negative. So any odd index here is going to be a negative. So the first term and the last term will still be positive. But here, this 8x, this is going to be minus 8x because I'm multiplying a negative in odd amount of times. The plus 24x squared is still going to be 24x squared. This 32, I'm multiplying it in odd amount of times now, so it's going to be a negative 32x to the third and I still have that 16x to the fourth. Um, in terms of adding this all up, 1 plus 1, that equals 2. 8x minus 8x, that's 0x. So I move on to 24x squared plus 24x squared, which is 48x squared. 32x to the third minus 32x to the third is 0. And if I add the last two terms, I get 32 x to the fourth. That is exactly what they wanted us to show for b. I didn't need to do the binomial expansion all again. This is perfectly fine. In fact, this is pretty much exactly what's written on the mark scheme. So this will give you full marks, the full three marks for that part, which is nice. Uh, just make sure you separate this. So this red, uh, I use that as my answer for part a. Make sure you, you don't use your answer for part A, I mean, you actually write out what this is. So, um, so for example, whoops. So for example, I, I mean, there we go. There's my answer for part A, separate it alone. And then I use that exact same thing for part B, but I have it written somewhere else. I hope you get what I'm saying. Um, so finally for part C, we want to show that the, um, 
curve, show that the curve with the equation for this has just one stationary point and state its coordinates. Look at that, a derivative problem now. So instead of using any other type of rule, what we're going to do is we already know that this is equal to um, what they show us in part B, so y is equal to, I'm going to put this in standard form, so I'm going to put my powers in descending order, so it looks like this. It's the same thing, except you know, last is first and first is last. And we want to find the stationary point and state the coordinates. So stationary point is we need to figure out where this derivative is equal to zero. Um, so 32 times 4, that is going to be 128x to the third, plus here 96x. Um, and we're going to, excuse me, we're going to figure out where that is equal to zero. Uh, okay, so we could factor out an x, and it's, it's important to factorize this because it's going to show you something. So this is equal to 0, so what we're going to have is two answers. Obviously, we're going to have that x is equal to 0, and we're going to also have that 128x squared plus 96 is equal to 0. Well, some algebra, when I subtract that 96, I'm going to have x squared is equal to negative 96 over 128. Never mind what that is, because if I have a squared answer and I get a negative, it's not real. So that doesn't work. So the only real stationary point here is when x is equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that back into my original to find the y value. Here, 0, 0, plus 2. So the point is 0, comma 2. And that's it. And that was 4 marks. So that's fantastic. Um, that's it. That's it. So they're asking for binomial expansion, and we did that. This is right in the formula packet that's allowed for the core 2 exam. So make sure you know it, you know how to choose and work with the factorials. Um, and aside from that, the rest is just some basic knowledge stuff. If you do have a question, drop a comment.